Mina, konnichiwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, back with more Psalm 78. This is a really huge psalm. It'll take, it'll take a few minutes to read this one, 72 verses long. And in the middle of those 72 verses, got another little something in the middle of all that that I wanted to share with you guys. And this is something that, interestingly enough, was brought up to me last night, and I've heard several times throughout my life. And it's in regards to when Moses uh, was delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt, and how many times that the Israelis just disobeyed God, went against Moses, and God had to smite them again and again and again with all the cool stuff that God was doing right in their midst. Uh, I'm going to start at verse 12 here. I'm just going to kind of pick, pick a few verses here and there. Again, feel free to read the entire psalm. Make sure I'm not saying anything wrong or saying anything out of context. Um, it is a little bit of a long read, so give yourself 5 to 10 minutes to tackle the entire thing, if you so choose to do. So Psalm 78, verse 12, Marvelous things he, that is God, did in the sight of their fathers. In the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan, he divided the sea and caused them to pass through. They, almost all of us have heard of the parting of the Red Sea. And he made the water stand up like a heap. In the daytime also he led them with the cloud, and all the night with the light of fire. The pillar of cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night, always leading them to their next destination at all times. He split the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink in abundance like the depths. He also brought streams out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. If you remember the story well, um, once where Moses struck the rock and the second time he was supposed to speak to the rock, but he didn't, he struck it again and that was his sin, that was his mistake. But both times a miracle happened. The rock was struck and in just in the middle of the desert, a huge abundance of water came out of these rocks just because Moses struck them with a staff. Pretty amazing stuff that God's doing. And then what, what was the people's response to these amazing things? Verse 17, but they sinned even more against him by rebelling against the Most High in the wilderness. And this continues on to read a little bit more. Let's go to verse, let's jump all the way down to verse 54. And he, that is God, brought them to his holy border, this mountain which his right hand had acquired. He also drove out the nation, so that's, they're going to Mount Sinai and spending um, 40 days and 40 nights there. He also drove out the nations before them, allotted them an inheritance by survey, and made the tribes of Israel dwell in their tents, driving out the nations from the land of Canaan, giving them that promised land and giving them a land that was really, really, really nice and completely just up upending the inhabitants that were there and leaving all the good fields and all the good homes and all the good plunder there for the Israelis to just take. And then 56, Yet they tested and provoked the Most High and did not keep his testimonies, but turned back and acted unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow. So we have God doing all these miraculous things in their midst, and they're still sinning against him. And the thought is, and I've heard some people say, like, if I saw... A pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night leading me around. If I saw my enemies like literally a bunch of hail mixed with fire fell on them, you know, a bunch of toads um, just came in and completely stank up their land, a bunch of locusts came by, ate all their crops, and then to top it all off, their firstborn children were killed. All of them in one night. You see this kind of power. And not all of it, and it's totally for you, and it helps you, and it destroys your enemies in gruesome, terrible ways. And yet they were foolish enough to still rebel against God and not express faith in Him, to complain against Him. And it's like, how in the world did they manage to do that? How is that even a thing? And I want to put forth what I believe was the cause. Human beings are not good-natured by, by default. We are actually sinful by default, evil by default. And just because we see some amazing, miraculous things, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to believe in the God who does those things. Doesn't necessarily mean we're going to believe in whatever he tells us to believe. Doesn't mean we're going to believe in him at all. It means we saw some crazy stuff, and we may or may not accept this other being's standards and blessings or curses on our lives. We may just go ahead and do our own thing anyway. Seeing a miracle... Being convinced of God's existence doesn't make one sin free. It doesn't get rid of that innate sin nature. The innate sin nature, that's something that 
if humans want to overcome that, if they really want to serve God, then they go to Him, they repent of those sins, they confess those sins, and they ask God to help them to stop doing that stupid stuff. Just because we see, just because if we see some miracle, whether it's one or two, and I've actually been privileged enough to see one very definitive miracle in my life. I wasn't there at the time that it happened, but I saw the aftermath of some guy that had stage four lung cancer in one month just get totally clear. No more breathing machine, no more hospital visits, no nothing. And it was amazing. That doesn't mean I haven't had my fair share of sins since that miracle. And even though I'm not a personal acquaintance of his, I only know him because he went to a church I used to go to, I could promise you he has fallen into sin since his miraculous healing. Miracles don't equal sanctification. The power of God does not equal the heart of God. God will in some way or another show himself to you. Just if you're watching this video and you're not a Christian, just this video right here. This is one attempt of God to reach out to you and get your attention. Doesn't mean you listen. Doesn't mean you'll obey. Even once you become a Christian, that doesn't mean your entire life is therefore perfect and good just because you've seen God's hand move. No, following God, being holy, that is a daily walk, that is a daily taking up our cross and following after him. And it's like the parable that Jesus told of the rich man who went to hell and Lazarus who went to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man in hell said, God, please send Lazarus to my brothers and sisters so that they won't end up in this horrible place. And God's response was, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. And he said, no, Lord, if someone raises from the dead, surely they will listen. And God said, verily, verily, I say unto you, if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, then they will not listen even if a man is raised from the dead. Miracles do not equal belief. Miracles do not equal holiness. Miracles do not equal people following after God. You've got to make the choice yourself every day to follow God or not. He will provide plenty of evidence for you, miracles being one of them. But ultimately, you've got to choose every day to live for him or not. A miracle does not automatically make you a believer. It doesn't automatically make you holy. It's one more piece of evidence, one more piece of proof that you can interpret however you want, for God or against him. And guys, let me know what you think down in the comments down below. This is, uh, pretty sure this is the first time I've covered this topic. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of pastors, a lot of churches mention this. And the thought is often expressed, how in the world can these people be so obstinate and so disobedient? Let me know what you think of my answer in the comment section down below. And this was a longer video. Thank you for taking the time to watch it. If you have watched it up to this point, I definitely appreciate it. Love you very much. God bless.